uh, Sam and Michael, and hopefully soon Tom from, from Dree, we're looking at performance um, on Bowling Director Action Harrow's Harrow, Commun Harrow Community Network. So uh, we had a meeting earlier with Dree and uh, talking through different plans and sort of doing sort of a bit of side by siding. Um, we've got this is the um, production site for Harrow Community Network, and this is the one for uh, basically we've got using Elephant SQL and Dree Push. And uh, so we've got everything working, and Tom's been working hard to iron out those means of 502 errors. They, they haven't experienced any of those today. Um, if we click on, you know, for example, basically it's running a bit slower than the one on Heroku. I don't think this Heroku one is on. Um, I don't think it's on. I think it's on like a legacy dyno. Let's go and have a look. Uh, that's production. Yeah, I mean, it's on this. We're, we're paying for these additions. It's a bit silly because actually, it seems like the new, the latest dynos include free SSL. So we're actually paying over the odds here. Um, but this is, is just, you know, what, yeah, it's just using legacy dynos. Um, I don't know if we have to upgrade it well, anyway. But uh, it, it's sort of, you know, if we do, like, I can click this one first here and get over here by the time i've clicked like this is you know will will load faster um and so uh tom is you know kind of investigating things on the back end uh he's written a little script in python that he's using for um kind of assessing the performance slack is behaving a bit strangely for me today Going on anyway, maybe there's an upgrade required. Um, I just started writing a little script here to to, to visit. I, I've been disappointed to find that I, I can't find like a sort of a performance thing that will like crawl through a few different pages in the site. Um, I have to bring this down here. Oh, I've yeah. just yeah. I mean, there's like loads and loads that will you know take an individual URL and do a load test on it for you. But uh, you can't kind of give it, what I want to do is say, you know, here's this um, URL and now go and find a few links, you know, within the site and move around them as if you were kind of a user and then come back with a, you know, performance pro. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Hey, good you? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, you, you met Michael before, I think? Yes, I have. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Hey, Tom. Pretty good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I was just bringing Michael up to speed on what we've been talking about <coughs> before, showing him kind of side by side and and so on. I yeah. had just started writing a little script that will now, you know, run, I can do this, and then it will kind of load Firefox and uh, will, like, open one one page. You've got that more sophisticated Python script that you wrote. Um, and this is this is oh now. yeah, I mean mine mine's driven using Selenium, but I'm guessing this is the same sort of idea just in Ruby. This is it's using Selenium as well. Got you, got but you. But it's it's using Capybara, which is uh, a framework we use for testing sites, ah, and so I'm able to write. You know, I'm, I'm very I'm very comfortable writing things like things like this. But I um I guess well I was sort of I was thinking oh I could just try plugging in a different database. I guess I thought maybe I would just try writing something my Self that um, would dump out some some numbers. I haven't actually run your script locally. Uh, are you having fun with your with your scripts? How, how are things going with you? Uh, it it does the trick. I mean, that pretty quickly highlighted the five or twos for me. Uh, right. And from there, it was it made it a lot easier to verify that I'd fixed it. Mm. So yeah, super useful. And I've just been I've turned it off now so that I can actually use my laptop because Selenium seems to kill my laptop. Right, sure. Um, but it, it was really helpful, and I've been hammering it for, like, I, I think almost 24 hours now. <coughs> right. And it's been a lot better. Right. Um, yeah. No, it, it looks like, I mean, I was sort of, you, you've been sort of jumping backwards and forwards between a, um, two links. I, I guess yeah. I was sort of, uh, with my one, keen to maybe make something that, that um, I was able to kind of, like, simu do a more 
wandering path through the through the site, which yeah, for full control, I do it with my. Uh, but so you think you've got to the bottom of the five hundred two issue now for once, and I haven't seen any five hundred twos today. So yep. what, what was what was the um, the problem there in the end? So, uh, like, stop me and ask questions if if I'm not making sense. I sure. might I might go very technical very quickly. That's right. But so what what I've got is uh, when when I first start up an instance of your application, mm -hmm. I connect through one TCP connection to make sure that the port's up before I put it in service, right? Uh huh. And what I was doing was I would then hold that TCP connection open mm -hmm. and use it for the first like real web request. Uh huh. The issue with that is if I start up a new instance and a web request doesn't come through um, like fairly quickly, mm -hmm. then that connection sits idle for 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And Unicorn doesn't like that. Okay. Unicorn kills the idle connection after 15 seconds. Mm. Which means that the next time a web request does come through, it finds, it, it tries to use that first connection but immediately gets a disconnect. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the 502 that you were sent. Oh, okay. So right, what I've right. done for now is I don't reuse that initial connection. I, I wait for the port to come up so I connect successfully and then I just close that connection off right away. Okay. And each, each request gets its own connection. Okay. And so this, this is then effectively infrastructure that you've got. It's that's like the load balancer or what have you in between uh, yeah. our, our, like our, our thing is running unicorn and what have you. And yeah, it is, it's uh, like, yeah, p p part of the kind of the push framework that you've got that our, our thing is sitting in. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and it's that load balancer that was, um, yeah, like that health check seemed like a very good idea to, uh -huh. to kind of reuse the connection, mm. um, but obviously causes havoc with, with stuff like uh, Unicorn. Right. And I suspect right. it'll do something similar with um, with uh, the Python equivalents of Unicorn, so yeah. yeah. Right, right. Okay, so it, it certainly it feels like that that now that that's been removed, then yeah. well, we'll, we'll, fingers crossed, we won't see any more. Uh, yeah, five o five o twos. Um, yeah. So uh, what what I was what if I hadn't what I was going to be doing here? I mean, we've got this rather imprecise automatic, um, you know, finished in a certain number of seconds, which is but it's, it's loading the browser and it's kind of coloured by all different things. What I was thinking to do was to write a little thing that would like visit a series of uh, links and just um, you know print out a, a, a time through, yeah. through one site or the, or the other yeah um, here um, is that is that where where because where, you were looking at something where are you in your what's the next natural step for you um, I mean what what I'm just generally going to do is is uh, the github integration is the next thing for me because along Along with that, I think I found ways to speed up um, the startup time on the apps. Okay. So that when when they're starting from calls, uh -huh. like it's not it's not as long of a delay. Um, okay. Yeah, there's there's a few other bits and pieces that I was going to play with, but like I I think what you're going to do here would be super useful though, just to to mm. validate that that's that what I'm going to do actually does make a difference performance wise. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know what I mean? Like if, if the quick startup time really is quicker, I should be able to see it by just comparing old yes. to new tests. Indeed. Indeed. Or even running even running your tests against um, say my production environment where we have the current code running and mm -hmm. the development environment where we've got the upcoming sort of GitHub integration and faster startup times. Right. Like it'll be really it'll be good to have that comparison. So Yeah. I, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I was um, well, uh, you know, and I mean, I, I can do like, you know, switch the um, the thing from a, like a Heroku uh, to a Elephant SQL thing and back again. Yeah. And uh, maybe Michael and I will just work on this script in this environment. So you know, you're welcome to stick around and see us see us do that, um, or we'll get on with it. I think um, whatever is the most, or we we'll just leave the hangout running and work on your thing and. You yeah, know. yeah. I, I was gonna say it would be awesome if I could just leave the hangout running, and then yeah. you know, if I if I see anything that I can help with, I can just uh, yeah, totally. back in. Totally, yeah. Good stuff. That'd be really cool. 
Nice one, nice one. Well, the thing I was going to say to you, Michael, was was I think yeah. we've got this thing in our spec where we can run a series of like each individual test, and it does like the like well, in local support in the actual back set of tests for local support. Right. When we run um, the test, we get this output at the end. I think this is something that that John added. Um, that, like if I run the the R specs, there's a time, right? Yeah, it gives like it identifies like the slow running. Uh, things there. Oh, let's look at some migrations. Um, uh, um, and I was just going to look at switching it on. Although, in some ways, I think it, given the different setup and bits and pieces, it might make more sense to be doing like bent. Like, I mean, the sort of the the, the simple thing uh, that it might be. Is just to do a, a sequence of things like this, and I was remembering. I think they're, they're like Ruby's got a lot of built-in benchmarking things, and it's like not so much that we particularly want to uh, loop over hundreds of thousands of times necessarily, but just you know, uh, rather than like hitting time now directly ourselves, I'm just thinking: is there there a, a clean Ruby way to just um, say execute this and tell me how long it took to uh, to execute? Uh, huh. Well, we can look at it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so th this is. Mark on the standard web. I mean, we, we, this is the thing that we get out from the R spec, you know, identifying the, the slowest. I mean, in the, in the long run, what I'm, what I really love to get to is to browse a lot of the pages and then particularly identify which are the slowest pages. I mean, I've also got a mind to our main site. And I kind of, I kind That's of feel. Say again. Um, I would suggest we just kind of focus on one thing at a time. But oh yeah, yeah. I'm not saying we do this. I'm, I'm talking about some of my motivation, right, for the longer term, which is that lot of like why I would even bother to write this script as opposed to just using uh, Tom script is that like uh, long. I've I've got this sense that the sure. performance of the, uh, the adventure site is kind of poor in places. And we've done, fixed things with the, I think the projects page and the, the users page. Um, there's this general ability of like, yeah. you know, you're worried about your site. You know, I'd, you'd like to be able to identify which are the slowest loading pages and then focus your attention there. Um, so uh, because I mean, I mean, so, some of the things ultimately might be ameliorated by. But yeah, so I mean, I guess one I was like trying to work out what is the um, way to switch on this report. About um, things in our spec, I couldn't immediately find. It. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so that's the oh, okay profile. So it's not going to be easier for you to compare uh, if. If you write it in your own format, uh, like, like with aspect profiles, you not have to do some post processing to then say this page took X, this page took Y, and on well, the it, next it, it, it depends how we break them out. Um, yep. I mean, I, I I think probably in the short term, the the I mean, the the, the nice thing about this is it has the like it, it, if we have uh, it visiting a lot of different things, it, it just I think we probably won't use this because the the, the teardown and the or, or whatever of the test suite or whatever we don't want it to be particularly polluting it necessarily. Um, yeah. So, go on, Michael. I mean, I was going to suggest if you so you don't want to do the benchmark, I guess. Well, I, I I do. I mean, I was sort of partly just wanted to remind myself how we get that information from from our spec. But yeah, so I mean, this benchmark thing here. I mean, I, uh, there was—I remember several things being in, in 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 Ruby, and I wonder if benchmark is the one that we want. Um, I guess it seems like if you wrap benchmark dot measure around your visits function, yeah, yeah, you yeah. get back the the user time, the CPU time, and the elapsed right, time, right? Yeah, let's. Um, yeah, like. Yeah, and I'm guessing that there's something. Something that isn't benchmark dot measure that returns like a like a machine readable sort of maybe an array or something. Right, right, possibly, yeah. That you yeah. can then you could even just dump it out to a file. I mean, I was, yeah. 
the next one suggest, compared to the bar. I would mind. suggest that you don't necessarily need even to run the spec, right? Mm hmm. That I thought we don't necessarily need what? Sorry. I was, I was just saying you don't necessarily need to actually run a spec, right? Or maybe... No, in principle, it could be, um, uh, I mean, I've, I've done this a few times and it's probably misusing R spec in some ways. In that I'm just, but I'm just so familiar with using Kamibara in the context of R spec. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess in principle, it doesn't need to be a spec at all. It can just be a, um, a, script. Uh, a, a, a script that does Kamibara stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, th th so this is here giving us that information. So Benchmark says that uh, there is, that's the user time, the system time, and the total, and then the quote, right. whatever that user is. C user CPU time, system CPU time, and the sum of them, and then the elapsed. Real time. Move this over here so I can see the things on the side. So it took 13 uh, and a quarter seconds. Yeah. In real time. Yeah. And so that includes starting fire, Firefox and then... And, and starting our spec and... Well, yeah. like, until you actually hit the yeah. measure. So how many times did you do that? Just once? Just once. Hmm. Um, so that seems a little suboptimal, but... Oh yeah. Uh, does it, it does, does it spawn a new browser? Fresh, right? It, I mean, it's it's starting Firefox from scratch on my system and then and doing right. Uh, gotcha. Got so each visit is is a new Firefox instance. Yeah. So the the thing that the thing to do here is if we, you know, we can we can immediately see there like uh, a first, second, and a third visit. Uh, yeah. From from the system. Because ideally, would you would you not want to somehow start up a, a Firefox instance, ignore the time it takes to do that, and then rather oh, absolutely. Turn function within the browser? Yeah, well, and that's what this will do now. In that the first one will include the um, the startup, and then the second one is gonna. Yeah. So this is there, and then so this will be like doing it and reloading it, and so a few times, so we can see there. So the, the first one, including the load up, and then the browser is already open. And then so now, yeah, it's basically taken eight seconds and then 10 seconds to load it on the subsequent two occasions. Yeah. And so th this 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 seems slow. A yeah, it slow. does. It does seem slow. So uh, I would be interested in running that against, well, we don't really have enough examples, but if you just ran it against Harrow, you know, yeah, yeah. So we can site. do this. So visit a site on Dre, and visits a site on Heroku. Heroku. Um, I'm also kind of keen to get it to like click the OK button for the the cookies, and then to move to the site differently. But anyway, uh, and so I don't know, I know, I know the URL for this, which is yeah. And so we were just looking at um, um, before you joined, Tom, the, we have this particular Harrison on. It's on legacy dinos. It's not on the paid tier. And so it potentially, you know, it has this, the same wake up thing. But uh, it has a legacy, it, it, you know, we've been, we've been running this, this service for like three years and it's on, um, you know, an, an, older, an older thing. So it's um, not necessarily representative of what the latest oh. versions of, um, you know, the hobby tier or the free tier or any of the tiers actually yeah. work with. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. It would be interesting to see whether that's um, sort of better, worse, or exactly the same. Yeah, well, I, I think what we might well do is set up, you know, a fresh instance. Uh, well, we've got, I've got, and I've got other ones to develop one. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, we can set up more of them. So you can see that it's fairly, I would say it's probably significantly faster on that. There's seven seconds, right? Yeah, there. So if, I mean, I guess we've got. I mean, we've got the advantage here that that Dre is running. I think before um, Heroku. So so th this is including the like. I think that the, the, the Firefox stays in there, yeah. but we can yeah. see here. You know, we, we're getting. You can still see seven and then three, right? We can see like the the seven versus three comparison. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's yeah. significantly faster, yeah. And so and so that's the kind of you know that that that's the kicker in terms of you know if I'm as we were talking about the meeting before, if I'm showing it to the client and it takes seven seconds to load after the first you know load thing, then yeah. we're kind of in trouble. I mean, you know that rule about the yeah, yeah totally, totally. I mean, so from from my side, like. I'll just be totally honest and tell you my thoughts. Um, is nothing, nothing like server-wise. Once once the app's up and running, nothing, nothing on our server should make it slower than than Heroku. It's right. So we, we, which the finger at the, the same time. It's it's got the same amount of memory. It's like mm -hmm. it should be as quick. So what I suspect is that one of the other components in play is mm -hmm. is what's slowing us down. So your suggestion of Elephant SQL is a good one, but then there's two, there's two other proxies in front of this. Um, one that puts custom domain name in, mm -hmm. one that puts the HTTPS in. Mm. Uh, so very easily, if I I'll drop you I'll drop you a link in the AV chat on Slack. Mm -hmm. um, I've dropped you a URL. If if you could try with that URL instead of the develop. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Let me go and find that. Okay, yeah, so this is the um the without the custom. Yeah, exactly. Have you. Yeah. Exactly. Um so and there I had another yeah. Yeah, and what I'm tempted to do see what I also get here, although although we're um um uh, I was gonna start just to find the um how oh good what is it like yeah, there's all stuff in Rush, but that makes it easier for me to do things. But anyway, uh, let's just put in here. If we just put in, so this URL, set this up. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to pull these out. Um, yeah, and so of course, like jumping around, like if we can identify the issue at this level, it's it's like kind of uh, you know do, doing more sophisticated crawling through the site is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, we'll just we'll just stick with this for the moment. Um, and I might just reorder that because we don't want to give Iraq the advantage all the time. Um, <laughs> this uh, visit site Andre, um, and we'll put in here without. Custom. Cool. And then we'll stick that in, in there. There we go. So that's. So that's without the custom domain, like the right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If if this, I'll explain to you guys how a custom domain works once once we've run this. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. And what, while that's running, I might just also nip over and I've lost the Heroku. Um, oh, it's over here. I'm just going to go and look at. So we've got some of our other servers that are. That, that, I mean, the frustrating thing, partly because it was so expensive to get the SSL on Heroku, the other servers on Heroku are not. Um, they're not SSLified. Ah, um, right. So right. it ends up being uh, a less, you know, uh, sensible comparison. Yeah. But this one. So, for example, here the Harris and develop. Yep. This is on, um, uh, the, I think, the, the current free free dyno offering. Yep. From, uh, let's, let's see what one the staging is on. Um, um, and, and, and the benchmarking, the annoying thing there is that, it, of course, it... Oh, so, and right, now the there's, there's staging is... So we've got... And the staging is on the hobby dyno. Yeah, because it got moved in recently, so we're paying for that one. Now, now this one, I think it's supposed to get. Maybe I should set this one up for SSL, and we'll get a. But so the the annoying thing that the problem may make this problematic is that if we go to develop like here, <coughs> we end up. Oh with, yeah, it's got a like a. It tries to, to it, right? the Rails app is. Set of course, to, it's using the Heroku search. Yeah. Um, um, but so I guess actually. I think Firefox is less. No, no, they do. You can go advanced and then just. And then we have a. I think if I had an exception for that domain, uh, it's permanently stored. 
And uh, having done that within Firefox, in principle, we could do a test against the developer and the staging there. Um, it would it would be cutting out the SSL. But let's go back and have a look at. So here, so we've got. I'm um, assuming that they're in. Or that was. Well, so I, I mean, I think this this ordering. I guess what I should be doing here. Um, I, I, because it, it does randomization. What I should probably do here is. I think that that um, I mean, this is telling us here that out of these three, yeah, the without custom, that that one was worse than three, at least what that profiling is saying. But that, in, you know, I think that's not to be trusted. Let's, yeah, that's a bit let's run it again and get the, if I run it with the documentation, we should be able to see no, more clearly better. which oh, yeah. of these three things it is. Um, yeah. oh, so it's seven, gone. Seven. I, I think I heard my doorbell. I'm just going to check if anyone's there. Sure, no problem. Be back in a sec. I said it, it looks like it's saying it's better, right? Or no? Oh, uh, okay. well, it depends on which bit of it you believe. But anyway, so here we've got, you know, this is hitting Heroku. Yeah. We'll leave that running. What was I going to do in the? I guess the. I mean, one of the things that I note from here could be the problem with you know running two or three examples. It's. Oh yeah, I mean, there's, there's um, creation, you know. Mm. Probably need a, a longer running process. Yeah. You know, maybe like a, hit it like a thousand times. Yeah. See, I thought I had been seeing that um, SSL was now free um, for certain free SSL beta May eighteenth. I mean, in principle, we could write a better script that, oh, sure. that hits it a significant number of times and just mm -hmm. let it run in the background. Indeed. And then analyze it, you know. OK, so the description there of how to get set up with there. See, SSL is now included on all paid dynos. So there's some new way to get set up there. Anyway, set separate. Let's go back over here. So I see this is Hiroku, this is Dree, and this is the custom. I mean the we so can this time it looks better without the custom. Somewhat better. Yeah, they're 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 it's 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 down. Yeah, I mean, I think um, obviously the, the differences are are such that we, like you say, there's there's uh, potentially we need to be looking at um, running more uh, complex or you know lo longer running things to get to get the numbers out. Um, I mean, this is just sort of speculative, isn't it? Um, to try and identify anything that that seems like an obvious obviously big difference. Yeah, um, I mean, this is like the plural antidote, right? Basically. Plural antidote? I said essentially this is the plural of antidote. I'm not sure what that means. It sounds very interesting. I... What? You said it's, it's like the plural I'm of antidote. saying that the plural of antidote is not data. Right. In other words, you know, a handful of examples is not... No, no, it, it's 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 uh, it's not 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 to be not to be trusted. Um, although, as we do five or six, and we see that um, Hiroku is consistently in the um, you know in the running centuries. for being better. Yeah, um, and I think it's uh, you know if, if we see things that are like obviously you know big improvements, then then. That's maybe that, that that's then we run a longer test to see if that improvement is consistent. Without custom mm -hmm. might be an improvement. So that indicates mm -hmm. that there might be something with the Yeah. Um slowing it down somewhat. But, but even did you guys see that without custom is a bit quicker? 
Uh, a little yeah. bit, yeah, but possibly. Like, I mean, it, but although the, the numbers are are uh, like, no. a, this was the one that we just ran here. Yeah. Um, and so you can see this is on Dre, and this is Dre without custom. Yeah. So, gotcha. You know, they're under seven, and I think that's gotcha. the first time we've seen Dre numbers on the second loads under seven. So yeah, it, gotcha. it's clearly some. There's clearly some number there. I was yeah. just thinking to run. Like if we go, like, can I go? I can go directly to. You can, but I suspect that the app uh, redirects to HTTPS if it's not seeing. Right. Yeah. Um, although, although, well, we can go there and then we can maybe add an exception for it and. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's. Uh... It's. Um... It's uh, what is it? Develop, develop dot local. Is that it? All right. That's I, it. I, I, uh, oh no, probably that's somebody else actually. Uh, oh, I need to go to the local support <laughs> thing here and just do. Um, uh, it's this one, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I should have gone. Mm. And then that S push, just change it to push. Oh, and not HTTPS. You're, you're saying without, like, just plain old HTTP, right? Uh, I, yeah, I think I know what it's doing. You see it redirects to HTTPS. If, if you were to run a curl in your command right. line, you'll see what you get it is when, when it's tell it to, HTTP. We'll tell it to redirect to the... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, so so that's that's not easy to isolate. Um, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think what we what we have got with this yep. is we could. Uh, I guess the. I mean the the interesting thing to do would be to point the um, just as a, a, a quick test is to point the develop Dre database at the Heroku database for our develop system. Yeah, or at least that would be the, for the staging system and, and see if that makes a significant uh, difference, you know, and run this set of things again. I mean, it ends up not being a new, I guess what I can do as well here is yeah. visit a site here on Heroku without, uh, and it would be without custom and SSL. Yeah. Which is, uh, if I can work out, the URL would be the same as this one. Did I just set up the staging one? Um, so th these are actually, we've got, this This is on the hobby tier. If I put staging in there. And this one, uh, that would be, if you put develop, it's on the free tier. Do you need to make it HTTP? Oh, did it? Um, oh, I wait, think it will. The, the thing is, it's going to redirect it to HTTPS anyway, because the Rails is forcing that redirection. Of course, yeah. Of course. Um, and, but I think with the exceptions that I've, I've added, so I might as well just sort of run that in the background mm -hmm. while working out. Um, I mean, the other thing that we want to make sure is that the, the database for, I mean, the thing now also with these two other instances is the database is maybe slightly different. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking about which to hook it up, and if I can, do I have a, a simple way of seeing, like if I'm here, can I see, we've got this, the database there. Are uh, you trying to work out how to get the database connection settings? Oh, no, no, I'm just wondering about which database will, like I'm just wanting to I look see. at the number of rows that we've got in the I database see. to check that it's like comparable. Um, and, and so there's, I think the staging one I've got, you know, uh, that's a perfectly reasonable amount of data that yep. it's, you know, I mean, so I'm not, not going to bother going to, to there. But so in principle, I can get from the, um, uh, while that's running in the background, I can go over to local support and, oh, it's got some, some failures now. Oh, what's happened there? It's not happy with something. Uh, mm, uh, error loading page. 
I mean, that I, I assume that that's, that's these two, 31 and 39. Yeah. Like, obviously, the, the well, not obviously, but potentially. Oh, uh, I guess actually, one thing I've got here, I've got, sometimes it gets kind of. Okay. So let's. Oh, I think what I might also need to do. Let me just load these two. To make sure that these two have looked. Is it, is it oh, actually, thing? confirm the, the exceptions. Yeah, I thought I'd already yeah. done. Oh, maybe I'd done it for one or the other. Oh. What I probably also need to do is quit far. I assume they, that that stays. We can just look back at the the thing here and see. Oh, yeah, the, the custom there is again. So, I mean, it, 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 we would be surprised if it was higher, wouldn't we? Really? So. Yeah, I anyway. think so. I think so. What What I like about the um so the the not custom was again around around six to seven seconds, right? Uh, yes. Perfectly. Okay. Yes. Good. Good. So at at least it's consistent. Is mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. is what I'm happy about. Um, now we just need to figure out why it's consistently slower. Mm. So uh, I'm just pulling off here. I've got the um, database URL for mm -hmm. um, the Heroku staging instance. Yeah. So are you, are you going to just create a new Dree app? Or um, I was thinking of just taking. Well, the thing is with the new Dre app, and then there's like, yeah, I mean, like, be setting up another custom domain and this, that, and the other. Oh, I was yeah. thinking that I might like just change the database on this one thing as a kind of like okay. changing a single thing and and doing a yeah. direct comparison. Gotcha, uh, and then just change it back when when we've got the answer. So, so I, I mean, like, connecting to one of the things I was talking about in the meeting before about, so I'm, I'm now here in this situation where I'm like, okay, I want to change one of my, effectively one of my environment variables. And in a Heroku, of course, I would be very happy going into a, in other words, it looks like for whatever reason, um, I wonder if, but here that this, yeah, that's so linear, and that, that error is, it's maybe flagging something. It's just not happy with it. I wonder if maybe Selenium starts up a browser instance that isn't aware of the exceptions you added. I, I think it, that that seems likely. It's it is maybe yeah. uh, not loading my 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 profile. I mean, I think we can. Um, I mean, th I think there's a process whereby I can set up SSL on those, which is some other thing that I will I will do. Yeah. Um, but so to come back to the, I mean the the, yeah. So the process for. Setting the environment variables and things on Heroku, we've obviously got the um, the, the GUI interface through the web, and then also the like Heroku config set things. Uh, again, this um, this issue that I I'm just remembering how to set it. I've got Dree develop, and I basically I can do SSH and then the can, branch, and then it, it, is it basically if I do git remote minus v. That exact yep. URL there is exactly yep. what I want. Exactly, My, minus the colon code, obviously. The, so like, so like here. Uh, that is exactly it. That's exactly yeah. It. So and I mean, if I do, able to, it's um, can then get my list environment. Of... It's in the. I can ping you the document link. Um, uh, it's it's oh, it's not env. It's environment. It's the full. Yeah, but it, it's like configure environment, if I remember correctly. Oh, con, 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 exactly where it is. Um, oh, yeah, I got the link. I'm going to drop the, the link to the exact command in Slack. I mean, although I guess it's a just, uh, I, 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 it's one of those things, like, I think I do know how to find it. Um, like, so here, the configure environment. Yeah. To get the but list of. If it's I want to get the list of existing environment variables, to just it's, just run it without any arguments. Uh, okay, so so configure configure environments and then just run it, and it should give you the list. I'm just doing this off screen because we're recording, and uh, yeah. um, do not share those elements. So it's it's thinking about it now, um, and I've got the new database URL for. Okay, yeah, so I've got that database URL there. So I can manipulate that doing minus S and then key equals value. Yep. So then 
twenty third base URL uh, equals there. So yes, interesting. So the, the um the database URL for the Heroku, it's it's hitting a Amazon box directly. Um, yeah, this URL for Heroku. Ah, uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, under the elephant S SQL one is is hitting their their own yeah. elephant SQL Of course, it may still be a, a, an AWS box under yeah. the hood. Yeah. Um, but it also might be in a different region or. Sure, there's, sure. There's a few things. Absolutely. But so, but so, can I ask now? So I've now set that. Yeah. In terms of, we don't have a restart command. How can I know that going to the DRE instance now? That it will be loading that environment variable. Do I just because you've talked before about it kind of caching things? Do I just have to wait now for a few minutes, um, or can it I? Can should I should be less than a minute. Have you already run it? I ran it. Yeah, about twenty seconds ago. So it should be. Um, I'm I'm cheating a bit because I can see the instances cycling. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you when. Because hmm. I I think that's something that's potentially critical for. Yeah, it's it's a giant pain in the ass not having it. Um, going I mean, forward, uh, uh, having a mechanism either to yeah. see when the change is taking place or yeah. to force the instance to reload. Yeah. Either one, anything that just allows the, you know, DevOps person to kind of, yeah, to, you know, to know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, that is, I, I've got an idea of how I want to do that, and it'll be triggered on like config change or. When you build a slug or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it's just not quite there yet. But it does sure. it does cycle fairly quickly. So, and and you've got I mean well, while we're waiting for that to happen, the yeah. um, from an infrastructure point, you've got yourself and you've got a few other people on the team. Um, I mean, basically that your your this infrastructure component is bits of code, bits of scripts, the things that sort of sits in AWS, you know, provision stuff. Load balances yeah. and this, that, and the other. Um, yeah. And is that all stuff that you're? Um, I mean, it's, it's, I presume not open source. You, you, you're, it's closed source. You're using uh, like GitLab in the enterprise or something to, to version all of that. Or what, what's your what's the um, kind of bigger process that you're using to to kind of develop and stay on top of all that complexity? So we've we've got a GitHub like a GitHub organization set up right. um, with with all the code in. The mm -hmm. bulk of push is is basically the like the router that kind of starts stuff up, up and turns it off when when things are done, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which I do actually want to open source. That's that's the thing I've mentioned to you in the mm -hmm. past about mm -hmm. possibly working out how we could how we could get that open source together mm -hmm. uh, and work on it. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. it would be interesting. So it, when you come in, it would be nice to do like like a whiteboard just on oh, yeah. the internals of push so that you know you know when yeah. I'm, when I'm saying like this feature is coming, you'll have a good idea of like how difficult it is, how right, close right. I am already. It'll be really good to to get that. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, and that would be great to do that before January the eighteenth uh, when I'm giving yeah. the talk at the um, oh, DevOps conference. Actually, brilliant. Yeah, if if you can, I mean, we'll we'll set up a day. I don't know whether you've set up anything with Ulrika, but we no, 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 we haven't talked dates yet. Just we just said New Year. Yeah, we should we should say early Jan, like maybe the first week of Jan if you're around. Sure. Yeah, works for me. Come so in, have a whiteboard. Yeah. You can you can have a free lunch? It'll be good. Mm -hmm. Indeed, great stuff. And they said there was no such thing as a free lunch. There, there really <laughs> is. <laughs> Indeed, it's Indeed. a good free lunch. So, given that you said I, I thought I might as well while we were talking, like kick yeah. that off to run again in the background. Yeah. And um, so this is now doing the same set of stuff, and. Yeah. It, there doesn't seem to have been any change. Of course, no, exactly we're not similar. sure that about whether it's. So we haven't got a mechanism of. It it should be on the new. Um, you think it should be on the hitting the new, off, new database? You kick off one more and let's just see. Uh, what yeah, I certainly get. can. I certainly can. Interestingly, that we can see, we can still see there. You know, even though the, the numbers have crept up there, still yeah. that the dream without the custom is, you know, slightly faster. Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, I probably should set this up to randomize it. Um, for, for this, that, and the other. Yeah. What I would really like it to be actually, do they not have a profiling thing for it? Sorry, so while that's running in the background, yeah. see, just, um, please remember to just like, is, does Cucumber not have a, um, 
profile flag. I would be things. fascinated in terms of the procedure for Dre, but yeah, well, uh, potentially, Michael, we can do a, a hangout on that um, day. Uh, like you know, we'll, we'll do a remote a remote thing. We'll we'll, we'll see depending on how. Um, yeah, well, like uh, even if it's uh, not not a public one, we can do like a, an internal internal one depending upon what how, how much depth um, Tom wants to go into. Um, Profile yeah, default. Yeah. I mean, is it possible to, to, to kind of record it and then uh, and then decide whether you make it public or not? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Let, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, we, have, we like, have all the uh, we have all the options. Yes. Yeah. I think I think we should aim for for public if we can. Yeah. Oh, great. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, the, you know, with Microsoft is being all you know embracing open source now, so uh, it's clearly the way to go. Um, <laughs> what was I just going to do here? Um, uh, Microsoft brought what they brought uh, their SQL to Linux, right? Right, right. Now running on the Linux. Mm. Oh, that's impressive. Um, that's impressive. And there was a year when Microsoft was the the I think it was like the second biggest contributor to the Linux kernel. Right, right. So funny folks, aren't they? Right. Um, just kicking off. A, I, I, we have um like our test suite for our main site. Like the captions test take ten minutes, which is not long in the scheme of things, but actually it's quite long for us. Anyway, mm. so over here, um, so I mean, both of these now we might think are kind of running on the new database. Um, we're not seeing any significant downward trend as a result of having changed the database. I would say it's about the same, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, you know, it, like as Michael pointed out earlier, I mean, all of these things should probably be run over a longer duration to work out, you know, the the range. But we're not we're not immediately seeing a smoking gun. Like like you know, yeah. if if these had all dropped to like three or four, yeah, you know, having made that change, uh, then we might have said, okay, yeah, it's looking looking like that. Um, hmm. I mean, yeah. the other thing I guess to consider is is there is there a, you you're saying Tom you think that the the in terms of the memory capacity and yeah. other features of the underlying box that the Hiro you know you're you're matching Heroku in those regards yeah it should be i mean like i can't be 100% sure of what Heroku has but um no, sure, sure. memory wise we're matching and mm -hmm. cpu wise i would have thought that we would have been quite similar yeah um i'm doing I've done a very cheeky tweak on on the server, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make sure a new instance. I've given it. Um, mm. I've I've sort of allowed it, like almost double the CPU, and I'm just curious to see whether that mm. that makes a difference. I'm just waiting for the new instance to start up. So oh yeah, well, I'm gonna knock that off. Um, uh, and is there a way for us, I guess, with this benchmark to just like get it into a data structure. Uh, I'm not. When you say getting it into data structure, what do you what do you mean? Uh, like some kind of in-memory data structure, at least, that could be dumped to a file at the end. You know, if we were to. Oh right. Yeah, I mean, a, long, we, a we longer can, we running can... process that you know, like yeah, totally. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, instead of puts here, we could just be writing that to it. We could be writing the output to a file. Yeah, and dump it like into a file, like a CSV or something. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, port it into some statistical package that. I'm yes, just... yes. Uh, again, although um, I, I would, yeah. I mean, the, the thing that I would be interested to look at is uh, standard deviations. Um, right. I mean, it, it's plot, yeah, plotting it is probably the. Uh, you can plot it. And all, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Indeed, indeed. Um, just over there, running the. I'm, I'm in the background looking at. Let's see. They're saying. Here about the stories about the Kigan ones, it says saying your format profile gives an indication of which scenarios are running slow. Oh, it's been renamed format usage. Okay, that's why I'm, that's why I just tried over here it didn't work. Um, New instances up by the way. Okay, yeah, let's. I'll kick that one off then. Oh. 
Hmm. Well, the cucumber thing. How old is that Stack Overflow thing? Oh, that's very old. Good God. I'm not getting any of this. Huh. Oh, so that continues to run there. No, it's still about the same. Mm. I mean, what would be nice would be to be identifying what the components of these things were. Mm. Um, I mean, I wonder if one thing to do is, you know, m maybe it's like, I mean, I tell you what we have got is that the Hiroku stuff, it's in Europe. What, ah. What? Okay. We've that, got that's in a Europe data center. What, what data centers are you running on with this? I am in US East because I'm cheap. Right. Does it cost uh, more to have it in like the, the I mean, like in Ireland, don't they, they have the um, things? Quite a bit more. Um, oh, let, really? me, let me check really? how much it is. Because mm -hmm. maybe, maybe an interesting option is just to spin up a, an instance in Ireland. I mean, that, this isn't like a five minute thing though, but. No, no, sure, sure. I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're probably coming to the end of what we'll do today. Um, yeah. I just, we, we did, like, this was about two or two and a half years ago. Um, Hiroku, you can, they, they adjusted it so that you could, we started with our servers in Hiroku US. Yeah. And uh, then one of the things they offered was they opened, you know, Hiroku Europe and we migrated yeah. to there. And I was just, I was just thinking about yeah. doing pings to these things. And that got me thinking about, like, so if we ping. It's interesting. So I, I think the, the biggest latency probably wouldn't necessarily be the web connection, but rather the, the database connection. You, you, um, yes, you, you'd have thought so. But we sort of isolated that by replacing the Dree, um, the, the Elephant SQL database. Like, this is now running. They're, they're all running against the same database. So I, I'd imagine that the database for your Heroku instance is probably running in, in Europe, though, right? I would assume so. So so what you have is you have the HTTP connection through to the US, from from here to the US for your... Um, and then it's talking back to Europe. And then, yeah, exactly, and back to Europe. Yeah, and it's going back to the US. Yeah. Coming back. Maybe, yeah. maybe so. I don't, I don't know... Uh, I don't know for certain where yeah. the Hiroku database it probably, is. It probably is in Europe, right? It, it, it might. It might well be. I mean, it would. It would certainly make sense for them to have it. Have it there. But yeah. it, independently of that, the um, uh, we would. Yeah, I mean, the the elephant sequel because they're Swedish, so they their, their thing is probably in Europe as well. But yeah, if if, if that is the difference, I mean, I think I think. Um, uh, I mean, it looks like they're not set up to do uh, pings and just you know. Uh, sens sensibly so, uh, but yeah. So, I, I, but I mean, you know, the interesting thing was that Hiroku, there was no price difference for switching to the Europe servers. But um, you, you were saying there, Tom, that there's, you think there's quite a significant difference if you yeah. buy your um, AWS compute cycles in a different location. If it gets bigger, the the bigger the instance. Let me let me set it to the instance that we've got, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you the difference. Just checking on the on the AWS calculator here. So that's it's one hundred and seventy four dollars and ninety five cents for the US instance that we use. One seventy four. Four and one ninety three and twenty five cents for the UK well the island version. So that's like a ten percent increase or so. Yeah, yeah, around about the. Uh, but I think it would still be an interesting exercise to, because it it wouldn't be. It would be mildly hacky, but I could get something up and running quite quickly, and um, mm. you know, for the sake of kind of answering. It would be, I mean, and of course, a lot of your clients are UK-based, aren't they? Exactly. Um, so it might even just be worth 
running it. Yeah, in okay. yeah. I'm, and, and so I mean, I think that'd be great if you do it. I, I'm just wondering: is it, a, it you know we've we formed a hypothesis there? Mm. It would be lovely if we could test if there was some way we could pro, you know probe that without you going to the trouble of setting up the the the, the instance because maybe there are other things that, that all of our attention should be focused on. But I can't immediately yeah. think of any way to do that. I mean, we know for certain that you the like what it, what it would be nice would be to just like I said before is like be able to break down this to like for example this this eight seconds right yeah it would be great to to know like oh the first two seconds was like waiting for the server to respond the connection and then I mean I guess the thing we can do I see yeah yeah is we could I mean we do have uh, if I go to so do you here, use anything so, like new relic or anything in there? Um, we do have new relic. I was just thinking, actually, even simpler. What we've got is the network tab in here, and if I reload the page, we can get like a profile of, you know, like the initial request versus this, that, and the other. I see. Um, yeah. And I want this to move down. Um, let's maximize that and. I don't, I don't want to see all these different... Well, I guess it's showing me all the things. Well, it, but, it won't render until your database has already made its query, right, Sam? Uh, it won't. Well, well but it, it will be telling us uh, about, you know, different sorts of wait times. So we've got the, like, the initial... Because the... the um, I mean, in, in principle... Yeah, I don't know if it, if it would, like, not render anything until... Will it block on the database completely? Maybe so. Um, oh. I would imagine that everything in your page um, Rails does. like relies on the database. I think um, Rails generally block on the database. Yeah, it needs to query. But I mean, we we, we get a first. The interesting thing is, let's say for example, that this is I think we we get a first response from this within oh, a, a second and a half. Yeah. Um, if we go to this one. Next to the initial. Okay, reload. Yep. And long. Yeah. So so we're we're. I mean, probably, a lot of the, a lot of the time is probably. I mean, all that basically there's a there's a big. And 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 these numbers are comparable with what we're getting from the the thing is that basically there is a yeah. a seven a and a half second before, wait before the first, <coughs> you know, set of data comes comes back. Um, yeah. I mean, I I guess there's. Like, so the question is, what is that latency, right? And right. I mean, hiding the database latency. Yeah. I, I suspect that you're right because if you look at the load times of all the other all the other bits that come you know from from the the instance they're all quite quick oh, just afterwards. building that initial page that takes quite a while well I think what we what we don't know from this is whether it's a database latency or whether it's latency because the, 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 the server is far away I mean yeah. and, and we can speculate either way I mean I, I guess the question is, is there some way for us to, to look inside this seven seconds? And I guess there, there isn't particularly. I mean, can on the data, can you put a database in US? Like in US? Uh, in principle, yeah. We um, could. I, I suspect it'll be easier for me to spin up an instance of Dreepush in, in the UK, though. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think it, that, that's it. It's. A, I think what we're getting to here is we don't have any other hypotheses about what would be causing this difference, uh, yeah. unless it's. I mean, the the other one that's on my mind is you know Hiroko has some like magic fairy dust that they sprinkle on their servers to make them <laughs> extra fast. Um, yeah. Um, we really the, uh, don't know what that latency is. Yeah. What its components look like. No. no um, and it's like that. We. It's actually. It would be difficult even to take it a part necessary I mean I, I guess like some sort of profile on the so like from the request coming in to how long it takes to you know get certain bits and backs pieces I mean we'd probably have to change the app we'd have to change the app code some well and or the, the particular thing is you, you don't have do you have anything on your side in Dree Tom that can tell you 
from receiving the quest, from re receiving the request, an incoming request, how long it takes before the first response is sent out? Can you see that in like the AWS? Do you get profiling um, of incoming requests and responses to them from the AWS system at all? Kind of, kind of. I'm not, I'm not really dealing in like HTTP requests. I'm, I'm kind of at the TCP level. Rather yeah, but which, than is, which is fine level. too, though. I'm just imagining like, but so for example, if there was an incoming TCP request, yeah, and then the time that it took for, um, you know, it, it, like if we knew that that was six seconds, right? Then that yeah. would be pointing the finger at the the the, the data. Again, I, whereas yeah. if it was like two seconds, and that points the finger at the. Either way, it clearly makes sense for the database and the um, the, the 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 server all to be you know close to the people who are using the app the most. I mean, that's kind of no problem. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. So. Um, and I yeah, think, I mean, like, even just well, to test a hypothesis, it would be worthwhile spinning up an instance. Yeah, yeah. In, and, the, uh, in the EU, anyway. Right, right, right. And and, and you know, ten percent more expensive. Obviously, we don't we don't like ten percent more expensive, but um, it's it's not uh, clearly one can test it, find there's no difference, remove the instance, you know, uh, yeah, without exactly. too much having been wasted. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Well, it's been uh, interesting to look at this together. Um, yeah, well, let's definitely try and have a, a meeting in the you know. In person in the first week of January, and uh, you know, get get in even further. That would be awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, cool. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna set that up anyway. Uh, mm. You said you're you're probably not around tomorrow, right? No, I've got. I promised the the wife and kids. I'm I'm gonna step away from the Brilliant. computer and do Christmas preparation Brilliant. stuff. So um, I you know, I I, I may that. like you know, uh, I'm a bit of a Slack addict. So you know, if if you're popping stuff into Slack, I, I may well catch and pick up on it. Um, I mean, I can also, you know, pop this up in a, but, but anyway, we should, we should, probably, you should, we should probably all be winding down. Uh, yeah. The, uh, you know, all we'll work and no play makes Tom, Michael and Sam dull boys, as they say. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> Good well, stuff. I'll, I'll ping you anywhere on Slack when it's done and then. Yeah. Then... No. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, is that something that you might actually do this evening even? or it's, it, what's... it potentially is. I'm going to have a go like now because I've still got sort of 15 minutes. Right in the bank for the day, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to go now and see whether. I guess whether... if you do that, we'll then need to deploy another instance on top of it. Is that 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 would be the sequence we would? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Would okay. Be. Okay. You know, let me know when that's that's up, and I'll and I'll look towards doing that in some uh, spare time. I might be able to migrate over what you got actually. I might be able to. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'll I'll ping you. I'll yeah, ping nice you. one. Excellent. Thanks, Tom. Cool. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Bye for now. Um, well, I'm probably getting pretty close to finishing, Michael. I just, I'm kind of like, ooh, I wish that there was a mechanism for profiling um, cucumber things. It seems, it oh, seems uh, funny. Like the, 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 the profile, they've got like a, it's like to pull certain, from like a cucumber YAML file. I feel like there's probably a way to render at the bottom of the page, you know, how long it took the database and how long it took. Yeah, it. yeah, I think you're probably right. Be some way to do that. Just, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Change to the code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, would, it would be nice to have a sort of a development mode there that, particularly once, with as we are doing, we're sort of playing around with different databases. Then um, we. Uh, What's the words? Um, you know, you'd like to like to it would, you know you'd like to have a little admin thing that allowed you to like, say, "Oh, right, this is working with this server and this database." I'm just going to switch the um, database back to Elephant SQL. Huh. <coughs> I guess on that instance. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, it's just going to be too confusing. I mean, technically, they're the same app, then, right? I'm both pointing to the same database. Mm. Yeah. Um. Is 
I'll go here to um uh, oh, my son is as well. Probably if you won't be around tomorrow, not sure. I'll be around maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if Matt's around. I mean, uh, there's 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 progress always to be made on that Twitter thing. Um, yeah. Hear about an, an, an annoying because they've got they're using the word profile um, to indicate like just a a, a set of um, features rather than um, the, the performance. Mm -hmm. I got a latte while I was out. And oh, yeah. I didn't realize it, but it was actually a coffee latte. Because mm. latte can mean either tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just with milk. Hmm. I don't normally drink coffee, so I feel a little wired. Mm. Yo, you don't normally drink coffee? No, I normally just drink tea. Mm. Mm. I don't really like the taste of coffee. It was kind of bitter. Mm. But having spent $4 on it, I felt like... Well... I didn't feel like throwing it away. Mm. Somebody seems to have a little things are rather old. It was one of those holiday, you know, white chocolate. It was it was really white chocolate peppermint. Hmm. Yes, oh, I missed the chance to have a gingerbread latte last weekend when I was in the kosher one. Maybe try and have one of those in the next couple of days. Um, so I just found somebody it's had a little something should be useful. I just, just seeing that the um cool. So why are we trying to measure cukes right now? Just Oh, I'm just like uh well one because the cuke uh because we would like to be on it. website one. Right. And I, I would be nice to identify that the, like there's right. this one particular one that was most of the um yeah uh so right now we're just we could remo remove that and um then we would like all of our cucumbers on website one would take a lot less time to run um I mean I'm also noticing like you know uh I mean not that we can really identify the trends from this but um uh like Matt was saying. Oh, you know, one company would. Oh, we're not really into cucumber. I mean, the 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 fact that um, a lot of the stuff about people identifying the speed of the cucumber test se seems to come like the the like I do this search, and a lot of the top hits are from you know three, four, five years ago. Uh huh. I wonder if um, cukes are dying, or or at least our spec is in the in the ascendance. Well, it is. You know, our spec is. I don't know. I think. Uh, what Uncle Bob, Bob Bob Martin said. Mm. Everybody says cu cucumber is slow. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, I tell them they're crazy because cucumber is just a regex maxing. Lightning speed uh -huh. Which is, is starting up rails, mm, right? Running the full stack and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know using like Capybara to mm -hmm. walk through the web page, right?
Yeah. But it's, it's interesting with Dre. I mean, that they're, they're definitely, it's a big thing to take on with them. Um, oh, no, this is interesting. Anyway, but so yeah, this, this gave, giving us some of the slower features there. And interestingly, the um, upgrade membership, I hate it when that happens, it's brief. Like, interestingly there, the um, upgrades membership features are burning up a lot of time. That's mm. not cool. Uh, I'm, I'm going to run the whole suite and try and find. I mean, it's interesting that the upgrade membership there should take, you know, like, they're all the three times longer than some of these other ones. Interesting. I mean, the upgrade membership one is um, doing the stuff where it reaches out to the Stripe server from the back end and manipulates Stripe things. Wonder if it's doing a rather excessive number of API calls. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. If, for for Dre, yeah, they're. Um, I mean, that they you know want to move move fast and get lots of new users, but that's. Um, yeah, all, all of these um, bits and pieces have got to be locked out, locked down, and. Um, Hiroko has got a real good head start on them. Yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, we'll have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, I suspect I probably won't, I won't see you um, until after the break. All right. Um, are Christmas. you, are you traveling for the? No. No. Are you, is your family all local? Mostly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. We'll have, have a, have a good bit. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any hangouts uh, next week, so it may even be the new. I'm just, I'm just not sure. I will <laughs> try to get through the Christmas weekend and then uh, and see how I on surface. But um, yeah, I'll try and hook you into the the, the Dreet thing in the first week of uh, we'll have it, and I'll definitely from from like third of January, I'll be back into the normal routine. All right. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>